And joining us now is Bob Hazelwood, who is the chair of the Kansas Soybean Commission. He's a farmer from Barrington, uh, of course, in Shawnee County. And so uh, caught up with him here at the uh, conclusion of the Kansas uh, Soy Expo. And uh, we've talked with the association side. Now, the commission side, that's the checkoff dollars. And so we wanted to kind of give an update on, uh, on what's going on there. Well, in the middle of December, we had our annual meeting for our budgets or, and how we decide what, where we're going to invest to check off dollars into projects for, uh, you know, production, uh, research. Uh, we also invest quite a few dollars in, in promotion of soybeans, whether it be international. Uh, and some of those things that we invest in on the international market, we invest in helping like the U.S. Meat Export Federation in promoting U.S. pork in foreign countries. Uh, we also help the USA Poultry and Egg Export Council in promoting eggs and poultry in foreign countries. And the reason we do that is because the hog industry, the pork industry, and the ch poultry industry are big consumers of U.S. soybean meal, and a lot of it is it's Kansas soybean meal also. It is. It's, it's always kind of interesting that I think what every other row of soybeans is is probably export even away from the U.S. Yes, that is true that every other row of soybeans is exported, but you know with the African swine fever issue that they're having in China, we've also felt that uh, this is an opportunity to uh, help promote more U.S. pork and U.S. poultry into this market because they're going to have pr problems producing their own, so we feel that we need to be out front with helping these other groups to uh, promote their product and make sure because it'll get that'll still sell soybeans to those countries. Let's talk about a little bit about the 19 harvest. Uh, we know that some areas just had a struggle. Uh, Kansas overall I think really not too many st interesting stories. It just kind Yeah, of, I know there was probably and don't want to say that Kansas come out okay because I know there's probably spots that uh, individual farmers may not fared quite as well, but as a whole, the state had a 48, I think it was a 48 bushel average they were estimating at, and, and acreage in Kansas continues to increase because, as we know, soybeans is, is one of the more profitable crops in, in, to be grown in Kansas now, so we're getting more acres probably uh, coming in from other crops or planting, uh, you know, we're planting more soybeans. So uh, as far as, you know, the, the checkoff generating money is for the you know the commission for our investment in those projects we've been have a very stable the last several years have had a very stable income stream so let's also talk just a little bit about uh, soy biodiesel that continues to just be one of those uh, bright uh, shining stars of uh, soybeans uh, yeah soy biodiesel is is uh, it keeps doing going doing well we keep increasing uh, also you know it not only buy soy biodiesel but in the Northeast, the the fuel oil heating industry up there has taken embraced bio heat, as they call it, uh, because as a cleaner fuel, because they were having competition from natural gas. So the, you know, a lot of those those distributors up there needed a product to beat, it, so they didn't lose the business. So they embraced bio heat. You know, the Northeast, you know, the the cities up there in New York have just really really embraced biodiesel also. Be, and, uh, and if you didn't know that the city of New York's got the largest truck fleet fleet in the nation hmm. and so they've really embraced it and, and they can tell you that they've seen results cleaner clean their environment you know local environment up because of that so very good great more nor new and good uses of uh, Kansas soybean Bob Hazelwood chair of the Kansas soybean commission has joined us we'll have more coming up